What's up everybody? Pika out here in Singapore and I have an interview today. I have an interview with a young man who is a beast. He is such a great talent and he's so humble. So if you haven't already figured out, I'm interviewing Jay from uh, Humbly Arrogant. So if you're not following already, please go follow him. But basically what it is, is he is a brand and he started early on in his life and he's just doing really well. So I really want to make sure that we get to tell his story because I so many of these business owners come from different places, different backgrounds, and they were doing whatever it takes to make sure that they get their, their message out there. Hey, Jay, good morning. It's hey, evening you? for you over less. <laughs> good, I'm good. <laughs> so um, I wanted to let everybody know that we're doing this series of interviews because I want to share the, the message, your message, with uh, some students out in the University of Cape Town in South Africa. And the purpose of that whole thing is to tell them that just because you have a college degree doesn't always necessarily mean that you get the dream job afterwards or you're happy with the career choice or the, you know, the, the education choice, whatever your situation is, you may not still be happy. So I wanted to showcase a lot of different people from different walks of life to show them that if you fight for it, if you're adamant about what you want, you can get it done no matter what. So if you wouldn't mind, would you just tell us a little bit about who you are and how you got started? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, well, my name is Jared. I'm 17, and I was in an after-school matters program that was partnered with an organization I, um, an organization I work with called Project Osmosis. And in okay. that, we had different – it was basically a class about each um, basic – fundamental of design so we had interior design graphic design and like all different types of design but also with that one of our classes was a personal branding class so then they wanted us to not only create a personal brand but they wanted us to create a logo to come up with the personal brand and that's where I learned that I wanted to do graphic design by creating my logo so with your after school program about how old were you when that started I was 16. That was, awesome. So all of this in a year. That's amazing. Year. Yeah. Humbly Arrogant just made one year in December, officially. Awesome. And then, so from that class, I created Humbly Arrogant. And Humbly Arrogant is about embracing grace and power all in one. So you take your self-consciousness and your fear, and you turn it into confidence in yourself and what you do. And you understand that everything is not only skillfully thought out, but executed to the best of your ability. And then you just understand that you don't take no for an answer and that whatever you do, you know, it's good because you did it. Perfect. So I'm, I'm curious, why did you come up with the words humbly arrogant? I, I totally understand what it means. I love the vision <clears throat> itself, but how did that come up? Because at 16, there are a lot of kids out there that are still, you know, they have their own idea of what's gangster, what's awesome, what should you be doing, how can you, you know what I mean? So this is, yeah. this is beautiful because if it's everybody, it's not just an average 16-year-old, it's everybody that can actually get behind this, this brand. Yeah, and I definitely know what you mean, especially from being from Chicago and trying to, like, dodge those stereotypes and things. And that's mm-hmm. kind of where it came from because another thing we did in the class was we made a mural, like, um, displaying the positivity in Chicago because when like people from out of town or wherever hear about Chicago it's only the negativity and only the violence and all types of things so when I came up with Humbly Arrogant it honestly started as a caption I would use okay. on like my pictures and stuff and I just like liked how it sounded okay. but then once I wanted to make it into a brand my mentors and things they were like you need a branding statement. You need to explain what this means. So after I put some right. thought into it, I figured out where I could take it. And <clears throat> it just went from there. Very awesome. So, okay. So you wanted to go with graphic design. You have your, you know, your byline, your name, your, your logo, basically. How did you decide that this was going to become T-shirts? Well... The program was a summer program, so I was in there from, like, July to August, maybe, no, June to August, and then that same year in October, the School of the Art Institute downtown had an all-high school design competition, so there was kids from, like, Simeon and, like, different Chicago high schools that entered their artwork. And so my mentor, he 
is one of the he's on the board at the School of the Art Institute. Okay. Entered it. I entered the Lion with the Halo and then I had the Brandon statement and then I also came up like I have took the personal brand and just for fun just to like enter it into the thing I put it into shirt yeah. put it on two shirts and sent them in like physical copies of shirts so that the judges could like see what I was like trying to Perfect. do and all of that and so with that I won first place mm-hmm. <clears throat> and so I got an $8,000 scholarship to the School of the Art Institute now so I got a MacBook Pro and then after that I got like a lot of buzz behind it throughout the city mm-hmm. and just a lot of publicity from winning that first prize. So then I just continued on making shirts and stuff since it got such Very a positive cool. review. So I remember I reached out to you um, a while back. I had interviewed Devin Lars, and I know you've been following Devin. Were you also working with Devin as far as branding and learning about the business as far as graphic design, stuff like that? Or is it just that you kind of came across him in the process of building your own brand? No, I didn't personally work with Devin, but Mm -hmm. I've seen his work and just like the things he's done and it just inspired me. So I like took after him and what I did. That's cool. That's awesome. So like I said, when I reached out to you first, you were still in school. You were still working on stuff. You just recently graduated from high school. So congratulations yes. to you on May that. 20th. <laughs> yes. So I saw, I mean, look, I'm, I'm excited. I am proud of you because how many people can run a business while they're in school and still manage to graduate on time? And it, so there's a lot of emotion behind that. And that's part of something that I, I'm sorry. <laughs> you said on I time. Said and what? On time with no struggles. We made it out. <laughs> Exactly. So this is the thing, though. There are so many emotions just on a regular basis for regular people who do um, to who who build a business. Right. Maybe you build a business right out of high school. Maybe you do it right out of college. Maybe you're building alongside having a job. But you did this right in high school itself. So there are a lot of emotions that come and go with that. How do you how did you manage all of that? Because there would have been times where you weren't sure if this was going to make it or not. There would have been times if you weren't sure if this was what you were going to go with or not. And once you decided, there are, there are always going to be stumbling blocks, people that are going to say you can't do it, stupid stuff that happens along the way to test your your drive for this this ambition that you have. How did you manage those things? Can you still hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, okay. No, my screen went out and it says I'm paused, but as long as you can still hear me. But Yep, I can hear you. To, you say, how did I manage the test? Yeah. Okay. Mainly just my mentors and things because I not only was I like working with Project Osmosis, but they also Mm -hmm. helped me realize what I wanted to do because before graphic design, I thought I wanted to be a psychologist. And then before psychologist, I thought I wanted to be a vet. So like Mm -hmm. I've gone through (laughs) a lot of different like career options and stuff. And so once I found what felt right, it just came naturally from there. And then, <clears throat> excuse me. And then. So it came naturally after, from there? Uh, yes. After I won first place. After I won first place, I just kept going with it and kept perfecting my craft and took like different design courses and like learned from different mentors and just, like, took after them, whether I met them personally or not, like Mario Armstrong and, like, other people that have just, like, helped me along the way or just, like, given me inspiration for new designs and things. Awesome. So there's something that you said earlier that I do want to ask about, though. It's natural for everybody to go through, especially at your young age, to decide on one thing, you want to do this, and then as the time goes by, you kind of change it, like, yeah, I'm not sure about that, maybe I'll change it to this instead. That's completely natural. I'm glad you said that, because a lot of people, even adults, still don't know what they want to do when they grow up, basically, right? So the fact right. is that you tried these things, you you tested the information that they were teaching you in order to get to the, the job that you would have liked to have had back then, and then you decide, okay, maybe this is not quite for me. If you could... 
maybe think back to why you chose those things. Was it based on the amount of money that you might have made um, based on the job? So as a veterinarian, you would have made a certain amount of money. And as a psychologist, you would have made a certain amount of money. For me personally, I chose um, what I wanted to be based on the amount of money I would have made because that's what we're taught, right? Okay, how, much, how can you make the most money? How can you live a, a happy, <clears throat> successful life where you can afford things that you want? But a lot of people don't teach you to chase your passion, chase your curiosity instead. Is that basically what you went through a little bit too when you were choosing these different things that you wanted to do with your life? A little bit, but also I was, because most of the mentors I have, Mm -hmm. they've always been around, but I didn't necessarily take like the design course or just didn't take an interest in art because for the longest time I thought art was just what we did in art class and I can't yes. draw to save my life. So I kind of wrote off art as a very, at a yeah. very young age. But then once I realized that, that um, art is more than just drawing and stuff. Mm-hmm. And my mom really helped me like realize that like I can do, I can design posters and stuff without having to draw it and without having to yeah. figure out how to get around that. And so Back to your main question about, like, was I based it off money and stuff? I wouldn't say I was because Mm -hmm. my mom has always told me, like, basically chase my passion instead of money because with that, money comes along. So I wasn't really concerned about the money. Like, I've always loved animals, and then I'm Mm -hmm. really into helping people, which is where the psychologist came from. And even now, the message behind Humbly Arrogant, even though it's a clothing line, I int- I still do, like, community service. Like, I volunteer at the YMCA and teach, like, different design classes and talk to, like, the inner city kids about yeah. other options that aren't presented to them. So I love that. The fact that you, you started in those places because it's what naturally came to you. I'm really, really glad that your mom is behind you and helped you understand some of these things and taught you the value of your passion and your curiosity versus trying to get a job based on money because a lot of people don't have that. So the fact that you have that support system is amazing. I'm so glad. Shout out to your mom. Um, and the, and the, you know, the idea that you wanted to help, you figured out that you wanted to help people. You figured out that you loved all these things and through grass, graphic designs, you've got those opportunities now. So that's also, it's all coming together. It seems like, so now that you've graduated, what do you think you're going to do? Um, you know, maybe during the summer. And then once you start the fall, do you have a plan already or, um, during the summer, I'm actually working on my application to start interning at, because Project Osmosis is for, like, students. So now that I've graduated okay. high school, I'm technically too old to be, like, yes. in the classes, uh-huh. which is kind of crazy because, like, my whole life has been based around that. But now I that I have perfected, not perfected, but, like, been working on uh, graphic designer stuff, they've given me the opportunity to intern with them. So now Perfect. I'll be teaching the same classes that I was once in. And then also, I got accepted into Columbia College in Chicago. Wow. For, Congratulations. So, thank you. So I'll be starting there in September for graphic design and marketing and business. Awesome. That is amazing. So I am. I'm really proud, honestly, for a 17-year-old to kind of really know what you're doing, but it's because you've tried all these things, you put yourself out there, you've been very, very transparent about what you believe, and that's come out in your brand itself. So if you could teach, and these are college students, and it doesn't matter how old they are, the point is life is life, right? So if you could teach two things, like leave a message for these people out in the University of Cape Town who are getting ready to graduate college, not sure if they're going to love what they do, what they studied or not but they still have it. So everybody has a passion inside of them. What would you tell them that they need to pay attention to maybe? Um, their own feeling. Good. Don't worry okay. about like what other people say or what other people think is good enough or not good enough. Like with Humbly Arrogant, it's about accepting yourself and mm-hmm. not just yourself, but your vision and understanding that if you put your all into something and you work for it, then it's good no matter what other people think about it. Awesome. I love that. Anything else you want to leave them with? Where can they find you? I know you have a website. It's humblyarrogant.com, correct? Yes. Okay. And then Where can they find you? My Facebook is at Humbly Arrogant. And then here on Instagram is at Humbly Arrogant. 
Very cool. So I really appreciate your time. I know it's kind of late. I know we've been um, we've been talking for a while now, and I really I really appreciate the way you present yourself. I mean, you are very professional, whether you realize it or not. You're very courteous and humble, actually, and I really appreciate that about you. So keep doing what you're doing. We're gonna keep following you. Anything you come up with, anything you need promoted, let me know so we can share your work because I think more people need to know about it. So yeah, here you are. You got a fan you. in Singapore now. You're welcome. <laughs> Singapore sounds great. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Come visit one day. But in the meantime, you keep doing you. Y'all, I hope you understand the message behind the story. It's never too early. It's never too late. Just do what it is that it's in your heart to do. And um, make sure you have a good support network around you. I, f I feel like you have really great people around you that help c uh, continue to push you through and push you forward. So you take care, Definitely. and I will catch you guys again later. Thank you so much again, Jay. I really appreciate it. Thank you. You too. You're welcome.